Welcome to Food Talk, where we talk about food, fishing, farming, all things East End. Today, my guest is Doug Goulian, who's the <laughs> chef owner of the Plaza Cafe in Southampton. Chef, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Good to be here. Good to have you here. Uh, what a lot of people in the town of East Hampton may not know is that you have a world-class, top echelon restaurant in Southampton called the Plaza Cafe. And you're hidden. Your location is behind the movie theater in Southampton. Let's just tell everybody where, where you are, across from the Southampton Inn. And um, Doug, you've, you're about to celebrate 20 years. 21. 21. Wow. It started the beginning of December, 21. So you've cooked in France, you've cooked in Croatia, you've appeared at the James Beard House. Um, uh, I, you told me earlier when, before we went on the set that you were a private chef at one point yep. for L.A. Reid. Um, so you have a wonderful career. I mean, Peter Giannotti from Newsday calls the Plaza Cafe Long Island's top spot for seafood, right? Uh, Zagat has you in their top five across Long Island for best seafood. Um, so, wh who was who were your early influences or, or current influences? Current inf uh, you know, early on it was uh, a young Burgundy chef that I worked with when I was a kid. Uh, I wish I could go back to those days where that gentleman showed me so much. But when you're a kid, you don't know what you're learning. You just want to get off of work and go hang. But when I got into culinary school, I realized this man had really set me up. Uh, to this day, I wish, I don't even know if he realizes I got into this career. I wish he would. Uh, he was, you know, getting on in years when I finally entered culinary school. But he would be my first main influence. You, you're also a Charlie Trotter guy, is that yes. right? Yes, yeah. When right. I, uh, we got the keys to the restaurant, I remember I told my wife, we got the keys and sh she saw me packing a suitcase. She said, what are you doing? I said, we own a restaurant. We're never going to go on vacation again. So I, she said, well, where are we going? So we're going to go to three best restaurants in the world, seafood restaurants. So we went to uh, uh, La Bernadin, went to Charlie Trotter's, and went to the French Laundry. And <laughs> at Charlie Trotter's, I got to spend time in the kitchen. And him and my wife really became great friends. And I just, I was so amazed by this guy's attention to detail and excellence was in everything. Uh, I mean, he used to walk around with, with tape on the bottom of his shoes to pick lint up off of the carpet to serve. I mean, it was intense. Uh, so I was really sad when, he, when we lost him, but I, he's a big influence. Is that sure. restaurant still open in Chicago, or did it close? That's a good question. I think it closed. I think he, he may have actually been closing before he passed. I'm not 100% right. right. sure. And uh, La Bernadette going strong, oh. French Laundry going strong. I had the pleasure of working for Thomas Keller. I was his, uh, I was, oh, wow. you know, I was his bar manager really? at a restaurant called Raquel. Yeah, that's where he started at. <clears throat> And, uh, boy, he's uh, talking about attention to detail Oof. and uh, a great guy, too. Um, so uh, you, you, you've, we, little known fact, you actually also cooked and had a restaurant in Springs. Yes. Called Monterey Seafood Grill. Yes. And that's where the today's uh, Harbor Bistro is. Yep. And where Bostwick's had, Bostwick's has had a few iterations, yep. but where Harbor Bistro is right now. So, uh, and that's maybe where we that's where first we met. met, right? Yep. What year was that? Oh my gosh! Well, it, before it Plaza Cafe. Yeah, so it's got to be twenty-two years. Twenty-two years ago, because I went from that was my first chef job out here, uh, and then I went on to uh, open the Plaza Cafe. Actually, the owner of that restaurant was in for dinner uh, last night. Hadn't seen them in years, and uh, yeah, that was a big. That was a two hundred seat restaurant. <laughs> I was, we did some volume in there, and uh, it was fun. It was a lot of good experience for me. Good. So yeah, that's when we met, and. Uh, uh, I think, you know, uh, we were working with Word Hampton, and uh, I think we got two stars from Giannotti yeah, then. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, he's always been good to us, and I was happy with two for the volume, right. you know, to right. do. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. So now uh, at the Plaza Cafe, uh, you've been there 20 years. You have one of the great waitresses of all time, <laughs> Barry. And if you've been to the Plaza Cafe, you know Barry. But Barry also had had a whole life at Balzarini's, yes. right? One of the, remember Balzarini's folks uh, in Southampton? So, um, so Barry's been with you for, for 20 years also? Yeah, but you know, Barry, I, <coughs> I still remember Balzarini's was closing. I was actually looking to buy that before uh, David uh, Lowenberg set up Red Bar there, another great restaurant. And uh, I remember Barry showed up for work, like interviewed three times, wouldn't hire her, just said, I just don't feel it. Finally, my wife said, just hire this woman. And my God, what a blessing that's been, because uh, she, uh, she brings more to the restaurant, I think, than I do sometimes. Well, she, she's a great personality. Yeah. She's very, very dedicated. 
Um, professional. The professional, uh, the lost art of being a yes. professional server. You don't find that out here. Uh, she knows wine. She knows how to open wine. She knows all about your dishes. And she's just a real evangelist for, for you yes. and, and, for, and an ambassador, which is really what you want a great server to be. So get over to the Plaza Cafe, will you? By the way, I've spilled coffee. Doug doesn't even <laughs> drink the coffee. You can um, have mine. we got a nice mess over here. Um, all right, so... Um, we're going to play a little Stump the Chef game. Oh, my goodness. Um, so we're going to go to the Food Lover's Companion. Uh, let's let it be known that Doug tried to cheat. He didn't <laughs> cheat, but he tried to cheat. And I did give him a hint that um, our word has a <clears throat> West Indian genesis. Okay. All right. The, what the word is, kasarip. Oh, my goodness, Steve. <laughs> Why couldn't we do something with seafood? Casserip. My job is to stump the chef. You did that when you said West Indies. Right. I'm going to have to say it's it's a spice from West Indies. You're, That's what I dude, think. Dude, you're of. close. It's used primarily in West Indian cookery. Casserip is a bitter sweet condiment made by cooking the juice of bitter cassava with brown sugar and spices until it reduces to a syrup. And then bottled casserip can be found in Caribbean markets. And then Wikipedia, by the way, says it also acts as a preservative. It's an anti and its antiseptic <laughs> characteristics have led to medical application as an ointment, most notably in the treatment of certain eye diseases. So it really has. Uh, Surprised you didn't know that, Doug. I'm very disappointed. Something I'm going to look into, yeah, though. I'm, I'm disappointed in you. Um, let's uh, uh, skip around and. Um, so you've got a chance to invite anyone in the world, history of the world, okay, even the future of the world, <laughs> okay, <laughs> to, to, to dinner. Um, who, who, what five people would you like to have to dinner if you had your, your, your choice? Wow. You know, um, this is going to sound weird. I, immediately some names come to, come to, to my mind. I'm not a very, I wish I was more spiritual than I was. We've talked about that a lot. I, I would love to sit down with Pope Francis. I, I just think there's an interesting guy. Yeah, and he just he talks to people. You know, he doesn't pass judgment. He, you see him walk through crowds and he isolates somebody. They could just be anyone. And I just admire that about him. So, uh, you know, humbleness, that's me as a chef, I need a lot of. So I would, we all do. We we all do. All, so he would be up on my list for okay. sure. Pope Francis, good one. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't get into politics. I would love to sit down with a president. And my guess is going to be Abraham Lincoln. Good call. Okay. I think that that, from what I know of history, what he went through with personal sacrifices and still be able to get people to follow him and unite at a crucial time in our country. We could certainly use that now from what you're seeing on social media. So uh, again, another humble gentleman that just put the good before himself. Good beard, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, really good beard. All right. So we got Lincoln and the Pope. These are good ones. All right. Well, who else would I, I, I Not do? that I judge. Oh, here, without a doubt, I'm definitely a basketball fanatic. Michael Jordan would be on my list. And that, that striving for excellence, like the child Charlie Trotter. Right. And more important, what he did to people around him, me as a chef, it's not how good the chef is. It's how good your team is and to elevate them. You know, um, I'm just going to pause you for a second because there was a thing I saw on uh, Yahoo Sports and it said, which, which, which iconic player is the, is, the, is the best team sport player? And it was Michael Jordan. Right. Tom Brady, yes. Wayne Gretzky. Yes. Um, I agree with all of them. And I think that those were the three choices. Without it. They doubt. were trying to choose the best. I don't really think you can choose no, the best. You can't. But, but the accolades of, of Jordan, let alone Brady, and I'm not a Pats fan. I'm a Jets fan. Yeah, neither fan. am I. But you got you to admire oh, the yeah. guy. I, I, I already give him respect. <laughs> they went out and did what they did. Uh, but that was incredible. On Sunday. Anyway, so we got, so we got uh, Michael Jordan, uh, uh, Pope Francis, and uh, Abe. You know, let's, let's go into the music uh, genre. Uh, you know, two names come to music. You're going to laugh when I say this because they're two opposite extremes. When I was growing up, I was a big David Bowie fan. Oh, Bowie's awesome. I, what I loved about Bowie was his way to reinvent himself. Always. Always, and did it to perfection. Not because he was following a fad, like you see so much in my, my business, but because he just felt it was time to elevate. Right. Uh, I just admired. I didn't like maybe some of the ways he was going, but I m admired that. 
And then you're going to laugh at this next one. Uh, and it's funny because I saw a picture of this guy in my, in my daughter's dorm room. And I'm going, how does my daughter know who this gentleman is? Tupac Shakir. Oh. And I'm looking at my daughter like, how would you know who he is? Dude, these are unbelievable. <laughs> All right, so wait a second. I've got to write this down. You got, this is going to be a good, <laughs> this is going to be a good, you got Tupac, uh, Abe Lincoln, Michael Jordan, Bowie. Oh, this is awesome. And the Pope. <laughs> well, I got one more, though. Okay, Tupac we're gonna, and we, Bowie are together. Right. But uh, Tupac was just a man that, that just amazed me about how honest he yeah, was. He was an honest man. He just laid it out there for pe people who want to hear it. And you don't really have to like rap or whatever, right. but I just did, you know, that guy got just. Great lyrics. No, yeah, do you listen? If you listen to heart. the lyrics, it was heart. And if you look at everybody, to me, people I idolize are people that have heart and yeah. just keep giving yeah, their best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lastly, I got to, you know, it's going to be my profession is Marco Pierre White. This is a, one of the first names. If you don't, oh. Marco Pierre White was, I think, the youngest chef to ever get a Michelin star out of England. Huh. Um, if you know anything about him, he was a terror. A ter he actually made, um, what's the chef's name that's on all of the, uh, the Gordon Ramsay? Gordon Ramsay worked for him. Now, you know how tough Gordon is. Gordon left his kitchen in tears many times working <laughs> for Marco. What I liked about Marco was he said something once at a convention I was at. A lot of celebrity chefs were up front. Anthony Bourdain is the host. And they're talking about the direction of chefs nowadays. Marco's sitting there in his British suit, deep voice, long hair. It doesn't say a word for like 20 minutes. He finally gets up and looks at all of these celebrity chefs and says, you guys are all full of BS. And everybody in the audience goes quiet. He goes, if you are the chef of a restaurant and you put your name on that restaurant, you are telling your guests you will be in your restaurant for every meal, whether you're doing one dinner or you're doing a hundred. You cannot be doing all of this nonsense. And ironically, he gave back his Michelin stars when he decided he wouldn't be in his kitchen anymore. Wow. Then my motto to this day, I have... I say the, the Plaza Cafe, there's so many great restaurants out here. We're probably in the top with consistency because I'm in my kitchen every day, whether it's one dinner in a snowstorm to 150. In the, and I admire that guy for that to say that. And I'm not knocking celebrity right, chefs. No. I'm just saying that's the path I'm taking. That's really cool. Uh, and I, and I, I love your choices. They're very unique. Thanks. And, uh, um, and Tupac was a, a curveball. That is awesome. <laughs> um, so, chef. Um, yes. You have brought a dish for us today. Yes. So uh, why don't we switch? Sure. We'll get you closer to it, and I can drink your coffee. Right. Um, <laughs> that was easy. Um, <laughs> pick up. All right, so the dish, talk to us about it. Well, it's um, when you asked me to come up with something, uh, definitely wanted to think seasonal. A little hard this time of winter, but a lot of these ingredients are, and some of them we can get in season. It's one of the dishes that doesn't come off the menu that often, so I figured I'd prepare it for you. I call it a, a tuna and crab tion. Uh, when I worked in Paris, tion was kind of described as an, uh, a dish that had layers to it. So I'm basically going to create layers in this ring mold of a tuna tartare, a crab ceviche, and an avocado wasabi mousse. It's all going to be combined uh, with a yuzu vinaigrette. Yuzu, you can look in your book, <laughs> is, uh, uh, guy, is, it, no, is an oriental uh, lemon, a little right. bit sweeter than our traditional lemon. And then I've got some lemon oil. And I got some wasabi sea salt from Amagansas Sea Salt Company. Yeah, so it's a real simple dish, a lot about freshness, a great way to start the meal. And like I said, it's one of the dishes that whenever I take it off the menu, people are complaining. So it's, it's our signature. It's right. like our pumpkin lobster biscuits in the fall or, uh, you know, our shepherd's pie dish. So that's what I thought I'd do for you guys today. Right. And then just while we're on the subject of, of your menu, um, it, like many chefs out here, you have long taken advantage of the, the farming and the, the, oh, wow. the fishing and, and, and the winery. So just talk about some of your favorite purveyors, what you consistently have on your menu that um, – is, is local, you know, when things are in season? You know, the, the, the spring, summer, and fall, even the, the, the late summer when out here everything's at full bloom. Uh, you know, I almost regretted when my wife said we were going to settle out here. I was, you know, coming back from Paris looking to go into the city. But uh, when I came out, you know, Star Boggs was just starting to do the local thing. And a few other chefs jumped on board, and then it just took off. And 
the amount of bounty we have, even in, in the waters, is incredible. Um, uh, Satter Farms was one of my key first guys. You know, Paulette and Eberhard did a great job. Eberhard being a chef, yeah. knew what chefs wanted. Right. Um, I love them. Uh, and, you know, I, you, going backwards a little bit, I'm very fortunate that in Southampton, we have a, a vegetable market, Schmidt's Market. Right. There's a whole local section there. So I used to have to, I had a guy called uh, Local Yokel Vegetables. This guy was, in fact, he knows I'm on today and he's making jokes of me right now. But this guy would go to all of the farms on the North Fork and just grab stuff, potatoes from this farm, uh, tomatoes from this farm, and he'd bring it to you. <laughs> and I remember one day I had a, a, a gra culinary graduate, and, and Steve was his name, walked up with the, the produce order. And the graduate goes, Chef, I'm not going to accept this delivery. I said, why? Well, it's got dirt on it, and it's not clean, and there's no little stickers saying it was inspected by so-and-so. <laughs> So I, I go back to those days, and it is just taken off. You can, uh, you know, and the wine world is a whole nother thing. I think I was laughed at when I first opened, and we did an American wine list with a big emphasis on Long Island. Uh, and I so admire the early guys like the Masoods and uh, Roman Roth and Christopher Tracy from uh, Channing Daughters. They really took a beating, and they kept persevering, and now they're making great stuff. Now people are like, oh, Long Island wine is great. It was a rough sell early on. Yes, it was. Uh, so, you know, living out here is phenomenal. Now you got the, uh, the company um, that brings you seafood, the dock to uh, right to the restaurant. Uh, Dr. Dish. Dr. Right. Dish is a great thing that's yep. going on. And, um, you know, there's, there's, the, the bounty is incredible. The winter gets a little challenging and you try, but, you know, I'm still getting local black sea bass. Uh, I'm getting local monkfish, local calamari, local cod, so I'm still in are there. Are there any root vegetables that are? Uh, yeah, my whole main, if you went into my cooler right now, it's all, there's celery root, there's parsnips, there's rutabaga. Even in our signature dish to shepherd's pie, we change up the vegetables in that casserole, uh, and the root vegetables dominate. Uh, you know, we're even doing uh, a swordfish dish that uh, makes almost a bolognese with root vegetables mm. as opposed to meat. Mm. Uh, so yeah, root vegetables are huge uh, right now, and now spring is where you get yeah, excited coming, again. Coming, yeah, you, you can feel it, like the weather today. today my God. Uh, so I'm sorry to interrupt. No, so, no. Uh, tell us a little bit about this dish, and um, um, well, you told us that it's a staple on your menu. Yep. And um, sorry to interrupt. So so please continue with All the right. ingredients and. Uh, so it, it it couldn't be simpler, Steve. Uh, we make up the uh, avocado wasabi mousse beforehand, obviously. Uh, and we start with the ring mold, and we just start with three layers. So the first layer is going to be this, uh, this mousse. And you know, this is, all right, everybody loves avocado. Okay. Then the next layer is I'm taking a little bit of sushi grade tuna. And this is another great thing that we can get locally. Uh, unfortunately, this time of year, I think the fish are a little bit further down south. But uh, hopefully they'll be on their way back. So all I'm going to probably packing their bags right now. I yeah, the, the weather was probably right. confusing the heck out of them no, right no now. Doubt. They don't. Uh, so I just salt and pepper a little bit. That fancy thing. Yeah, this is when I do my cater. This I, L.A. Reed. This is where <laughs> he bought me these. I was just going to say. He yeah, he, he he always saw me. You get those autographed. <laughs> uh, and then what else? Okay, so then we're in this mixture here, Steve. I just got some pickled ginger, mm. some cucumbers. Uh, some scallions, and a little bit of wasabi. And this is kind of the marinade for the tuna tartare, along with the yuzo vino vinaigrette. Nice. Okay, so we're just going to toss that around a little bit. This is going to be our second layer. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of vinaigrette. This could be one of those dishes where I've been admonished by the wonderful producers here. You just taste the food. You don't go glomming it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this I like to eat. You know, I've been... Not, um, and you know where you... you handcuffed. Know. It's not right. When we're off record, I'll make you another one. Yeah. So the second layer, and again, this just couldn't be simpler. Uh, it's really all about the ingredients, the key being the freshness of the tuna. We, you know, you got to buy sushi grade, and you can't mess around with those other grades. So we're kind of lucky. We buy the whole loin right now because we got another tuna dish on the dinner menu, and this is actually the belly meat. Okay, so 
I've done that. My next layer is basically, we call it a crab ceviche. Uh, in all honesty, it's a crab cake that we didn't turn into a crab cake. Uh, <laughs> so we're just going to put that on top of that. And we're using jumbo lump right now. Uh, we also love a peaky toe crab that we get out of Maine, which is really cool. Now this is the key, which I'll probably embarrass myself if this doesn't come off right, but we'll figure out now. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some seashell leaves. This comes from Copert Crest, a farm over on the North Fork. Uh, what are those leaves called again? Seashow, S-H-I-S-O. Yeah, yes, you pointed at that book. You're mad about this book. No, right? no, I do no, stuff no, with that. No, look, I burned you. <laughs> but Ooh, this wow. company, yeah. What a wild taste. People look at these things and think, oh, they're just putting them on there for decoration. They oh. make, we actually use, uh, when they have it, micro wasabi, which is just this burst of flavor wow. that, uh, uh, that's so, amazing. So seashell leaves, I'm just dumping in a little lemon oil. That's just I spelled that. S H I S Shiso. S H I S H O, I think. Okay. I actually got a little wasabi salt here, Steve, from I'm against Shisho, it's, aromatic yeah. green, jagged edged leaf from the per, from the beefsteak plant, which is part of the mint and basil family. Like, folks, this is one of the most unique. Ever. Yeah, it, everything they make over there, and you know, I, that I can get year round. I'm going to use this as my next <laughs> word. For the next unsuspected stuff you're watching, future guests. Uh, all right. God, lastly, wow. Lastly, we're going to just add a little bit of wasabi tobiko for a little bit of crunch. And honestly, Steve, that's about it. I'll let you did, try. you did you sea salt it? Yeah. Yep. I missed that. I was yep. too busy looking up. Put a little bit of this around the outside. And then hopefully we have little voila. Things. Voila. So that's basically it. Couldn't be simpler. Again, it's all about ingredients. And listen, you could change this up. We've done local fluke in place of the tuna. Uh, mm. You know, we've done so many different versions of it. But it kind of stays with us. It's refreshing, simple, great way to start the meal. Oh, it sure is. Uh, looks so wonderful. I appreciate that. Um, can dig in whenever you so, want. So I tell you what, let's um, let's you grab those spoons over there. Okay. We won't we won't waste uh, silverware over here. All right, and, let me um, just rinse these off. Thank you, Doug. Um, let's just uh, acknowledge briefly, sir, um, your late wife, yes, Andy, who is just a, a real compliment to you to the restaurant. Um, she's passed now for yes. for how five long? years. Five years, yeah. Yep. And you've done an amazing job as a single dad, and, uh, and you've held the restaurant together. And those of you who, who knew Andy, she was the front of the house. She was a warm, embracing. Uh, you got something nope. up there yet? Yeah. There you go. I'm going to get this off because uh, I'll just keep staring at it. <laughs> and, um, but she was just awesome. And, um, you know, uh, um, like continued condolences, but, uh, you know, time yeah, she heals all wounds. So we just want to acknowledge her and say, Hi, Andrea. How are you? She's yeah. probably laughing because she, she knows how. She, she's been with us since the beginning. She's the one that got, got us really introduced that day. Yeah, that's day true. The, that's uh, true. She's, all right, Doug, I'm going to go for this. All right, because, yeah, dig uh, in. It's time. And uh, we just did want to say hello to Andy. Yes. And, uh, oh, boy. Refreshing. Hey, listen, guys, i got to have a second bite <laughs> because it, this is really It's refreshing. And it has um, layers, layers of flavors. Layers That's what the tea on meant. And yet it all works. It's almost like a perfect drink, like a yes. perfect margarita. Where you You're getting really different. It, that, you know, if you got that out of the dish, then I did my job. Oh, yeah. Because uh, uh, that's what I was trying to do is as you dig through it, a little bit of spice, a little bit of uh, heat, a little oh. bit of, mm. you know, uh, citrus. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a great way to, to start over. Um, what's the best thing about living and working on the East End? You know, I, I think we just hit on one of it. In my yep. business, is just the bounty that we have. Yep. Um, it, it, you know, I, the summer I wish I could say was the best time for me, but I've never experienced summer out here. You work <laughs> seven days of work. You know, the spring and the fall, you're just a beauty. Um, and, the, and the local community that's here, it's, uh, uh, I, I love the chefs that I came up with uh, when I moved out here. Um, you know, That's a nice fraternity of chefs. Oh my gosh. A lot of a lot of viewers may not 
uh, be aware of, but yeah. you talk about that. Oh my God, you know, you start, you know, when I think of my generation, and you know, there's a new one coming up, and I'm not that familiar with, but I think of the Joe Ramaltos from uh, Nick and Tony's, the Kevin Penners, uh, the Mike Rossi's from 1770 House, Christian Meir from Stone Creek. Oh, yeah. You know, whenever we do an event, you know, th there's always camaraderie. There's Jason never Wiener. Jason Weiner. He, he's one of the ones coming up that you know, he's a little bit, you know, uh, after us. But, man, that the energy in that gentleman. Yeah. Whew, you know, I watch his uh, he's Facebook He's got a thing post. about amber waves. It's, it's, it's weird. It's, yeah. It's, he's no, he's it's, in the, I, I love this guy. I watch him. I go, oh, my God, this guy is full of, uh, yeah, he's the next one coming up. And, you know, I hope there's more like him because, you know, me and Joe were talking like, you know, you don't see a lot of guys. People are going from one place to the other. Right. And, and this business is getting harder and harder. Um, what mistake did you make that turned out to be your best learning experience? Buying a restaurant. <laughs> With, uh, hands down buying a restaurant. I had no desire to own a restaurant. My wife just said, you can't work for anybody. Yeah. You need to buy a place. Uh, you know, I, I had been in corporate. I had been a private chef. Money was, would have been much better going those routes. But it turned out to be the best, not just professionally, but personally. Mm. I, I came in as a arrogant, loud mouth. You know, I had to be the best at everything. And my wife, most importantly, in the restaurant second, taught me what was really important in life. And I started to really develop as an individual. And that's what I thank the restaurant business for. I went from being that person to trying to be more humble. Well, it's a humbling business. <laughs> oh, it does. Uh, it brings you to your knees, yes. Well, it's it and Andy did a really good job because you are one of the more uh, humble chefs that I've bumped into. Actually, we have a lot of humble yeah, and down to earth chefs out here, um, and that it hasn't that wasn't always the case. Certainly, when you were coming up the road, no, it wasn't. So I, I truly appreciate that about you. I appreciate our long term relationship. Oh my gosh! And our, uh, I, I know that if I'm ever in the neighborhood and I just stop by, the chances are I'm going to catch you at the Plaza Cafe. We always have great conversations All the time. and. Uh, I would just urge our viewers to, um, to, to, to you know, if you're going to go catch a movie, you know. Yep, right next um, door. Uh, in Southampton, it's right behind, it, it's, um, um, is it Elm Street? No. Uh, 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 they actually named the road I'm on now, Veradian Way, but I'm off of Hill Street. Hill Street, that's yep. right, that's right. Yeah, right across from the Southampton Inn. Right, and it's really, uh, really worth your while, folks. Um, you're going to get great dishes like this, Tien. What else? Give me a quick uh, favorite menu item. I would probably say this, the shepherd's pie, our version of uh, the traditional Irish dish we do with seafood, lobster and shrimp, another dish that doesn't come off. Um, that's all we have time for today, folks. Cogelo suave, pero cogelo. Take it easy, but take it. Thanks for watching Food Talk. Yeah, it's a good show, bud.